Welcome to the 4.3 journal, page 104 in your journal. This is rotations and rotational symmetry. Okay, let's get this a little bigger here. Uh, vocab, you can see the 190 and 193 pages listed here. Our rotation is a transformation in which a figure is turned about a fixed point. And remember, look these up, kids. You're going to learn more reading all the stuff around these and looking for them than just copying this down. Uh, center of rotation is a fixed point. We got the fixed point from above. These two kind of define each other. Can't do one without the other. Angle of rotation. There's a good picture of it on the next page here, formed by rays drawn from the center of rotation to a point and its image. Oh, actually right here we got that. So here's our point. Here's our image. We got the line going to the point, the line going to the image. This angle right here, the 40 degrees, that is our angle of rotation. Okay. So that's where that comes from. Rotational symmetry. Uh, well, we did reflectional where it folds over on itself. Rotational is similar, and it maps to itself, but you do it with a rotation. When a figure can be mapped onto itself by a rotation of, and that's going to be 180 degrees or less, about the center of the figure. And then the center of the figure, uh, that's the point at the center of the rotational symmetry. So again, two words that kind of define each other. Okay, so you get some stuff here. This is shown mostly on page 190 in the book. Just a little bit more colorful there. Uh, they got the same thing, and they have some examples for it afterwards. We don't do example one drawing a rotation. We do start with example two, uh, rotating a figure in a coordinate plane. And uh, I mentioned here, I'm going to show you how to turn the paper to visualize that in the class. I can't really show it on the screen right here. Uh, but these rules, like the one we had for reflection, these set of rules should be written down on a note card and kept handy. You're going to need them. Uh, better to have them available than to spend all your time looking for it. Uh, you'll see in the examples I write the rule, write the rule down, you know, which is like this part right here. Then I write my points under the A, B. Just what I'm saying there. And... Uh, the image goes under the new, whatever the rule happens to be. So, uh, other angles of rotation require constructions or trigonometry and some special rules. Uh, we're just going to stick with 90, 180, 270. 360 just takes it right back to where it started from, so we don't do much with that formally. Uh, so let's get on with a few examples here. Okay, so graph the image of the polygon after a rotation of the given number of degrees. I'm going to do number one. We got 180 degrees. A, B, and to the opposite of A, opposite of B. So I'm going to write my rule down. A, B, into the opposite of A, the opposite of B. Just double checking that. Then I'm going to write my points down here. I've got J and again I got to notice that's twos going by twos here. Negative two, negative four, so that's negative two, four. Uh, J, K negative 5, 1. L is 
negative 2, negative 2. And where am I here? M. That's going to be 1, 1. Now I'm just going to perform the rules. Remember, this is the opposite of A, opposite of B. It's not negative. Opposite, change the sign. So I just got to change all these signs. So this is going to go to 2, negative 4. Oops, that's going to be my J prime. My K prime is going to be 5, negative 1. My L prime is going to be 2, 2. And my M prime is going to be negative 1, negative 1. I can go graph these points then here, j prime 2, negative 4, so that's right there, that's my j prime, 5, negative 1, that's going to be right there, that's going to be k prime, l prime is 2, 2, And negative 1, negative 1 for M prime. Okay, and we got that. I don't think I can rotate this whole page. But I'm pretty happy with that one. I can see it. Uh, I'd like to rotate the page. Not sure how to do that right now. Okay. Uh, the next few, and you're going to probably need some scratch paper for these. You can see I used a lot of room on that. Not a lot of room for these. You probably got enough room for number three on the side, not for number two. Uh, number five, 90 degrees about the origin. Is that We're doing a composition here. 90 degrees about the origin, we do that first. And then xy into x plus 2, x minus 3. Okay, so 90 degrees AB to the opposite of B comma A. So that's our first move. We're going to have AB into, what was it, B, the op opposite of B and then A. Okay, and then we're going to do that. Then I'll worry about the other rule in a minute here. So I've only got two points to worry about here. I got M which is again, notice our scales here. They lost the negative four right there, but you can see the other ones here. So that's gonna be negative two, negative one, and I have N, which is at three, one. And then I gotta just follow my rule, M prime, opposite of B, so that's the opposite of negative one, so that's positive one. A stays the same, negative two. 3, 1, we have the opposite of B, that's negative 1. And 3, oops, I forgot my N prime. I got to graph these now. Uh, actually, I don't think we're graphing these quite yet. Sorry, had to check some stuff. They do want us checking uh, or graphing each image here. So both the single image and the double prime image. So 1, negative 2, that's going to be my M prime, negative 1, 3, that's going to be my N prime. Ironically, they have better graphs in the back of the book where they use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 on the scales. I don't know why they do this here. So now that we got that done, now we need to use the next rule. So I'm going to use my xy into x plus 2, y minus 3. But I'm going to start with my m prime, which is 1, negative 2, and my n prime, negative 1, 3. And I got to use these. So this is going to be 1 plus 2 negative 2 minus 3. Whoops, I forgot to put my m double prime. And that's going to be 3, negative 5. 
So negative 1 plus 2, 3 minus 3. That's going to go to 1, 0. So let's do this. 3, negative 5. Be right there. That's my M double prime. Maybe I should do these in another color here. go to purple. Okay, and n prime one zero. It's my n prime. There it is. It looks like I slid that down and to the right, a little to the right and a little bit down. Looks good to me. I'm going to come down to number 10 first here and then go back and look at some of those other ones so they're more similar to what we did. So on this one, determine whether the figure has rotational symmetry. If so, describe the map, describe the, any rotations that map the figure onto itself. Okay, so on this one, I'm going to think my lines is symmetry. I can think this one, vertex through that. And then I've got this one. I should have five of these on here. And we go on. I can look at that. But that gets a little confusing here. I'm just going to look at a couple of these consecutive ones here. And so this first rotational symmetry there. Now don't forget there's 360 degrees in the circle. I have five of these lines in here. So each of them have the same rotation on that. So that's going to be 360 divided by 5, which gives me 72 degrees. So that's going to be a 72 degree rotation. So this one, yes, it has rotational. That should be... And we're going to have a 72 degree and 144 degrees. So this would be my 72. This would be 72. So if I want from here to here, that's 144. We're only looking at 180. So we, we were not going to go that. We'd have 72 the other direction and the other direction too for the 144. You could also think of these as, what's that going to be, 216 degrees. Two hundred eighty-eight degrees. Also on that, it's supposed to be there. On that, those last two should have been purple. And we get that. Now the book actually has a mistake. They looked at it, all these lines in here. And they were saying, hey, from here to here is a rotational symmetry. But that's obviously not right because this vertex isn't going to a vertex right there. So we can't just do that little spot. Got to be careful. That's going to only come up on those odd odd number of sides of shapes. Uh, I'm pretty much out of time here. These are doing the same. Draw your 180 degrees. Then you're going to have to have your line x equals 2. You notice you can see how I put my, my scales in here. So you'll get x equals 2. That's going to be this line right there. And then you're going to have to reflect that around that. Now, you may have to add some extra graph space to fit some of these. I can't promise you that. And uh, this is the same thing. Just make sure you use that y equals x rule. You'll be fine. That's it. Have a good one.